M100 with Tony and the Disco is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for the NBA and the NHL playoffs this season. Every stat, every matchup, and even live odds while the games are being played. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker. The run line was one of our over 150 slots games. Head to the website today to get in on the action. Don't forget to use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A D, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. The game starts here. Did you watch Raw? Yes, I did. What was the number, Joe? I think it was 1.6 or something. 1.6. Um, so they open with Drew. Uh, he comes out and said the rest of the Judgment Day is behind Damon Priest every single time. McIntyre said he was, was interrupted. Damon Priest comes out was accompanied by Finn and McDonough. And once in the ring, Priest said McIntyre has a shot at Clash and Cash and he's still making excuses. He's talking about like Talk about the, the judgment to interfere even before the match even started. So the priest said McIntyre made it personal by suggesting he needs a judgment day to be champion. And priest said he was heading into McIntyre's territory in front of his people and still pulled, put him down. And priest said that, that as much as he loves the crew, he doesn't need judgment day or anyone else to be champion. I'm a champ because I'm Damien priest. So McIntyre said <laughs> it's the same speech and he doesn't priest has to say. And said the only chance priest has is, is the idiots he was accompanied by. The priest told him to just stop. He suggested that McIntyre face Finn on Raw. The stipulation would be that the Judgment Day would be banned from ringside if McIntyre wins. Conversely, if Balor wins, Judgment Day gets the honor and privilege to be in ringside to watch Priest beat McIntyre in McIntyre's hometown. McIntyre suggested the Priest was digging his own grave, and McIntyre said he'd be the world champion by this time next week and called for his music to play and left the ring. Then McIntyre stopped me on the stage and looked back at Peace. Priest and said, you screwed up. Um, any comment on this opening segment? I, it was kind of... I, I thought it was just like the SmackDown... Opening a uh, SmackDown opening segment and let a lot to be desired after all the great openings they usually do. Okay. There were no good line, no good one liners, no burns, no interesting dialogue from either, which they usually bring it. Do you have the yawn emoji, uh, Joe? Yeah. I want to throw that in there. Uh, the look on Finn Balor's face when Priest volunteered him to face, <sighs> yeah, the other guy, <sighs> the other guy was, um, you know, kind of. You can tell that they're starting to do some dissension there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and also him saying, and he said it twice, I don't need the judgment day to beat you, okay? I'm sure that will come back to haunt him somehow. Um, and then they had like the stipulation where judgment day wasn't going to be ringside, right? Right. Uh, to me, that doesn't matter because I have a big feeling CM Punk's going to come in and well, plus two, you know that uh, every the mother knows he's going to win the match. He gets right. out. So uh, backstage, uh, Dom shows up at the clubhouse and, and Liv Morgan's there. He's like, I'll t tell her to get out of here. Um, Dom said he didn't want anything to do with her. Morgan said a gorgeous man like Dom shouldn't be with a woman who calls her mammy. He should be with a woman who isn't afraid to call him daddy. Right. And then Morgan left her hotel key for exiting the area. Good segment. Very good. Right. Ruth. So then... Uh, the, your boys, the LWO is backstage um, and Cole hyped that they would face Dominic Mysterio and J.D. McDonough and Carlito later, later in the show. Uh, Bro, let me tell you something. This, these little things get me, especially for the Latin culture. So Zelina Vega is holding a flip-flop, right? Right. You know why she's holding a flip-flop? No clue. Because in Latin culture, usually like the mom sweeping the house or something, you do something wrong, she takes up a flip-flop and she that. hits you with it, right? <laughs> Right. But that's a role for an older lady, right. not for a young girl. I mean, it's right. so JoJo, but maybe they're selling flip flops. <laughs> Dude, yeah. So, uh, so Live of Valkyria against EO Sky. And um, this didn't interest me, but I watched it. I'll say this these two girls were pretty good together. Right. And the, the this is the issue that the WWE has, okay? When these smaller girls work each other, the match looks really good. It's but you got all these other bigger girls. They put the smaller girls over the big girls. It just you, you lose the suspension disbelief, kind of, you know. Right. But but the the smaller girls are not like they they out of each other out there. Right. You know, it's actually pretty good looking TV. You know, so I didn't you know I didn't think much of this, but uh, after the match, um, you know, they interfered, and then Sane and Kai attacked Valkyria from behind while Sky watched from ringside. Um, then Katie, your, your girls, Katana Chance and King Carter came out to help. And he was like, this, you know. Throw the that. yawn out there again once. <sighs> okay. So 
Valkyria, to me, who she's not an interesting character whatsoever. They tried to match her up with Becky before she left, like passing the torch kind of deal. Uh, I'm not into her yet. Maybe I will in the future. Uh, you know, one of my pet peeves is using people that mean nothing or do nothing. Dakota Kai still, even after she had appeared, means absolutely nothing. Not sure why she's even part of the roster. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not interested. Man, they had a good match because Eo Sky is one of the best, and Valkyria can go, but I'm not into Valkyria at all. That's a, uh, according to your source, Conan. You know, Valkyria versus Becky is going to be the storyline when Becky returns. Yeah, well, your source can. So Dominic was shown in the clubhouse while the image of Rhea Ripley in a wall post was included in the shot, and then Finn and all the guys show up. Oh, and let me also tell you another thing. Why are you bringing Caden and the other one in? They have no heat. Nobody really cares about them. <laughs> the funniest thing is that they're the former tag team champions. I'm like, yeah. I forgot about that. It's like, yeah, I still, I still don't even know anything about them yeah. right here. Um, so Dom, uh, so all the judgment day is there. Dom goes, check this out. He throws the room key on the, on the table. And Carlito's like, that's cool. <laughs> that like, was, I'm, bro, I popped when he said that. Yeah, that's cool. That is when, you know how we do the five top five? Yeah. That's in my top five. <laughs> right. Um, you know what I was hoping, dude? And actually, we'll find out in uh, later when you read it. I was hoping that everybody would leave. He'd be the last one, and he'd take the card. Yeah. So next, so backstage, uh, Miz was looking for our truth. and ran a clip on Sami Zayn as we'd seen him. And Miz said, uh, not good things happen when truth is left on his own. Continues surge. The Zayn found Maxine Dupree and Tazawa. And Zayn said he was sorry that they were caught in the middle of what's been happening with him and Gabe. Zane told them they didn't have to take it, and Otis showed up, and Zane said there wasn't much left to say, and he'd see Otis in the ring. Then Otis stopped Zane and said he lost it and wanted to explain, and Zane said he didn't need to because he went through what he did with the bloodline. Zane asked Otis why he puts up with it. And Otis spoke about how Gable has been there for him and said he's nothing without him. Zane said that's not true, and he hopes Otis realizes how special he is and how special he can be, and then, then the crowd just com- completely with this, they started to notice, you know? Right. This is very, very well done. No, but isn't this the one where Otis starts saying, "Where he's my only friend"? Right, yeah. Gable's my, yeah. Did you just yeah. say that or no? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, he's, I mean. he's nothing without him. Okay, basically. yeah. You're right, bro. Yeah. Otis was great here. Right. Um. So Damien Priest said as a clubhouse. I mentioned that Dom wasn't with him during the opening segment. We brought up the hotel room key. But Ballard said Morgan was just trying to play it season to distract them. Ballard said, no one touched the hotel room card, which Priest went out where it was no longer on the table. So somebody somebody supposedly took the hotel room card, like a big mystery, so whatever. I uh, like that. I, I like that because you're wondering, who was it? Was it Carlito? Was it Balor? Was it, who was it? I like that. Right. All right. So you're going to love this. Um, well, no. Not, so Ludwig Kaiser had a video, and he said he's where the people think he's going through his mouthpiece. He said, didn't be shameless by talking last week. He said, he would not be taken lightly and said he belongs at the top and anyone who dares to step his way will be eliminated. And Kai- Kaiser said, the rise of the tiger has begun and soon fans will call him Mr. Money in the Bank. It's actually a pretty effective thing because I like the way he said, people he's, people think I'm on the guy's mouthpiece. And Good I'm not, promo you know? and great what? character development progression. Right. All right, so you're going to love this. <laughs> so they did this stuff. We'll just probably go over the match, but they did Dom and uh, Dom JD and Carlito against Braun, Ray Mysterio, Dragon League. And they built up to this spot the hot tag, and everybody's on the outside of the ring. Yeah. So Braun gets in and looks at the crowd, yeah. and the people, like all the heels are on each side of the ring. So Braun just starts running around the ring and just hits a body block on each one, just knocking them silly. It's all three guys. Bro, he got a pop each time he made contact. Bro, he always gets a pop. <laughs> and then he rips off his shirt and he gets another pop. <laughs> and it's funny. It's a funny spot, but it's pretty, it works, you know? Yeah, well, it does work. He's just funny when he runs, especially right. when he's running after somebody. It's right. great. Shout, shout out to Jared Aviat who in the mailbag last week was pointed out how Braun is not over. Right. Tony, would yeah. you say that Braun That's was twice. not over in this match? No, he wasn't out at all. I don't even know why they use him. Yeah, <laughs> right. exactly. Yeah. yeah, great job, Jared. So now he's going to send in Again. Another, another email explaining his position. So, so. Um, yeah, but the, but then, uh, and of course, the baby faces go over. So the more dissension with the uh, the judgment tip. Um, uh, oh, so wait, excuse me. So Liv shows up near the end of the match, and her and Dom. Dom gets uh Oh, this was good. Yeah, yeah she's on the apron. So Dom like gets outside the races. Hey, get out of here! Get out of here! 
Liv gets blocked into Dom and right. she lands on top of him in missionary position. Right. <laughs> everything in the other moment. That was <laughs> very good. Was like, yeah, so that was, yeah. A good, that was a very good spot. Um, so, but, but let me just say something about this match, and I'm not picking on Vega, but... So at the end, so you know that she had, so she got on at Liv. Actually, right. that was, I, I don't want to pick up, but that was a pretty good little tussle there. It, it was, was but the people game. were not into it, bro. I was right. listening to the people and they were not into it. Right. You know, and I think it's just because Vega hasn't really been used all that well lately. I Maybe, I don't know. Because right. that should have gotten a pop. Yeah, you'd think, right? Yeah. All right, so they did actually a a, a bro. Here's another thing: Michael K- Cole and Pat McAfee. And it's kind of funny where they're making fun of McDonald's Funko Pop sized head. Mm-hmm. Uh, gonna, yeah, yeah, and Carlito, who's been great. Did you see when he flinched when they put the Judgment Day's thing bah, in their entrance? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, come on. Yeah, that was hilarious. So Ilya Dragunov actually had a pretty decent video package here. He tried to talk a little bit more about, you know, but bro, because they're trying to like, this guy actually was, he was the NXT champion for a while. Yeah. Not so, only that, they made a, during the Otis match, I mean, during the, his match with um, Braun Breaker. We'll get to that. Don't okay. talk about this now. So backstage, Ricochet, Ricochet told Dragunov he knows he's capable. He knew he'd break, he would show Breaker what he's all about. And Dragonoff said he would slay the monster rather than let the monster slay the dragon. And Dragonoff said he and Ricochet could have had have another round once he was finished with Breaker. And Ricochet said Dragonoff read his mind and said he would have his back. Uh, so then they show Sami Zayn walking backstage while Cole hyped his match with Otis. Um, Cole hyped his match Clash of Castle. Backstage, our, our girls, Eo Sky was stressed out while Dakota Kai and Carrie Saint stood behind her. Kai asked what happened out there. And Sky said she took care of it. Sky screamed and then yelled something about damage control. Right, you could understand the first thing she said in English, the rest you couldn't. Right. Sami Zayn delivered a promo in the ring, and Zayn told the fans changed his name that they were very nice to him, and he thanked them for it, and said he needed that because he's been messed up a couple of weeks. Zayn spoke of defending his title against Chad, and Zayn said it started extremely personal, and I doesn't know what to call it. Zayn said he would defeat Gabe and put an end to it once and for all, and Zayn said there was no more dealing with the abusive, manipulated psychopath. Zayn said it was time to go back to work as the Intercontinental Champion, and then Gable comes out with Otis and all that. Gable said that Alpha, Com- Alpha Academy trusts their master and his methods, and Gable told Zayn to wait to see how happy the others would be once he takes the title on Saturday. Zayn asked again if Gable is out of his mind. He told him to look at his pledges and see where they looked happy. Zayn asked him if they're all happy. Zayn asked, said Gable doesn't care about them and whether they're happy, but the people do. And Zayn said the crew would not be happy until they leave Gable once and for all, and Gable said Zayn doesn't understand they are a family. And Gable said the trio would be with him on Saturday, but he was unleashing his version of Otis on Zayn tonight. And Gable said it'd be the most brutal and ruthless version Zane has ever seen. Um, so then they have a fight, and basically Otis started, started splashing, and looks like he's going to beat him. Um, Gable told him to splash him a third time. He gave him two splashes, and Otis was slow to comply. Gable stood on the apron and told him to stick with the plan. That while he was distracting him, Sammy came out of nowhere with a haluva kick and beat him in like a minute. Then after the match, Gable attacked Zane while Dupree and Otis checked on Dupree and Jazawa checked on Otis, and Gable ordered Dupree and Jazawa to lead the ring. Then Gable held up Zane and told Otis to hit him, and Otis didn't take the command. Gable, the, the, once again, the people with everything here. Okay? And the great thing about Otis is he thinks about it. Right. You know, he's like conflicted, right. which is so, good. So the Gable told Otis he spoke about this and slapped, Otis slapped him twice. Right. Then Otis started to fire up and then ran towards Gable, who moved, and Otis closed like Zane in the corner and then power slammed him. Then Gable put his hand on the shoulder of Otis, who spun Gable around and ripped off his own T-shirt. The Gable cowered in the corner like a, like a, like he was scared, and Otis decided not to hit Gable, and instead left the ring while Gable from went from begging to smiling, and the crowd was just with everything here, and ended up booing the end of the segment because Otis didn't beat up Gable. Right, dude. Everybody's been great in their role, even as uh, what's the uh, the Japanese guy Tazawa, even Tazawa and um, the girl. They're they're um, uh, even in their limited role, they've been great. I have a feeling, bro. That he's gonna blow up in Glasgow, Glasgow, mm-hmm. and uh, could, that'll be a really hot fan base to do it in front of. So next they show um, uh, what you call it. Um, Miz is still looking for uh, Truth backstage. and spotted Sonny Deville talking with Natalia. Then Deville pointed in the direction of Miz in the direction of Truth, who emerged from a nearby room. And Truth said they had a title match against APA later in the show. And Scarlett showed up and told Truth that it was a pleasure reading his fortune. Scarlet hit him with the death tarot card and said AOP looks forward to seeing them in the ring tonight. 
I think the funny part here was when he goes, yeah, I just spoke to a fortune teller. And Miz goes, WWE has fortune tellers? Right. You know? Just, <laughs> right. Yeah. And then, she, yeah. then she came out, right? Right. right. And, the, and the way he kept thinking the AOP was the APA. Right. <laughs> right. That was funny. Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie's funny. And so is Miz. Right. Uh, uh, Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark come out. Um, uh, then Alba Fire, uh, Kathy Kelly interviewed Alba Fire and is a daughter. Fire spoke about speak, competing in their own home country on Saturday. And Dawn said tonight was just a taste of what will happen on Saturday when they win the tag titles. Um, then they had Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark against Alba Fire and stuff. And uh, Baszler and Stark win. And they're all going to be in a six man and just lost clean. I don't know. This, this is completely. Dude, not- let me tell you what was wrong with this. So this is something, and uh, you know, a WWE makes mistakes, bro. And this to me was one of them. This is something AEW would do. But anyways, uh, if you, I can't complain much about this match because it was like three minutes long. But if you didn't think that Alba Fire and Dawn had zero chance of winning the tag team title in Glasgow. Now it's negative zero. Right. You, so how are we supposed to believe in them? He, Even though they attacked Baszler and Zoe Stark before the belt, they tried to injure Shayna Baszler's knee, which was injured in that match with Lola Vice, which was actually a great match on NXT. Okay, They had no ropes, dude, and it was like the old underground thing where all the wrestlers are around. Mm-hmm. And Lola used to be like an MMA fighter. So this was re- it was really good. And then Shayna Baszler choked her out. How are we supposed to believe they're going to beat the superhero team? This was bad, badly, bad booking by WWE. All right. Speaking of bad booking, so they showed a Breaker uh, video packing. Right. It was actually a really good one. So Breaker wrestled Zillia Dragunov. For some inexplicable reason, it was a 16-minute match, and they gave Dragunov probably 12 minutes at least of this. Right, right. Okay. To the point that the crowd was not with him because Breaker was like getting his like no offense in, right? Like at all. Well, they're trying to make him look <laughs> so, credible. That's yeah, why. I, yeah, but this was not the spot. That's not the way to do it. Yeah. Right. This was like, dude. This wasn't even. You know, he was beating the out of the guy. Right. <laughs> so, like, but then uh, Breaker comes back at the end and hits him with three spears. And after the match, Breaker tees leaving and look back at Dragon off. Then Breaker charged towards Dragon, but Ricochet appeared out of nowhere and got some good offense on the uh, on Breaker. Um, so then the, the segment ended with a uh, ricochet and um, uh, drag it off like buddy buddy. But the, the yeah, this section not that bad. This At match, the, the post match, but the match itself was just too long. Played way way too long. Too long. Not, no, yeah. Now a lot of people had been telling me when I wasn't watching NXT, you got to check out Braun Breaker. You got to check him out, and I did. And I said back then, and I say it again, that is money. Okay, I will give a dragon off a lot of credit for being. Very, very brutal and hard hitting. And I like that. Okay. Then, bro, when Breaker did that front suplex on the announcer's table, I don't know if you noticed, he he went rid first into the edge of it. I'm yeah. surprised he didn't get hurt. You know, yeah. um, that's basically it. Not a bad match too long. Um, so then inside the Judgment Day Clay Clubhouse preset, they had to fix Oh, and, and this is the thing I wanted to say before. Bro, Cole said something I didn't know, which makes you know, uh, Dragunov and Braun look even more special. He said they're the only guys to hold victories over Gunther. Interesting. Obviously in NXT. Right. Yeah. So uh, the judge inside the clubhouse priest said they had to fix what happened earlier. And he brought up the missing key card, which Don pulled out and said he didn't know how it got them. Like he had it. Again, he says that Liv must have put it on him when, when they were out there. The priest told Don they to put his foot down with Morgan and they all put their fists together and priest invited Carlito to take part. Meanwhile, Balor grabbed the key card and put it in his pocket. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. So, um, uh, so where I thought there was a promo in the show with Cross, but I, I, I'm Marie Reed. I can't read it. Oh no, here we go. Uh, um, so they have the, the ring entrance of uh, truth. Truth makes a ring entrance. Backstage, Sheamus told McIntyre they hadn't seen Ida Island, but encouraged him to take the title on Saturday. And Sheamus mentioned Ludwig Kaiser and remind the bank and says he wants to do the same. McIntyre to go make him give him a heads up if he catches in on him. And Sheamus said it would be just like old times with a banger. So they're like buddy, buddy again. Right. So, uh, then Kathy Kelly interviewed the final testament in the gorilla position. And Cross said he hoped Xavier Woods would realize that he belongs to them after AOP won the titles. Scarlett told Woods that he can't trust Kofi. Pretty generic. 
So they have the match, and it's uh, six minutes. Uh, Cross trip Miz and Truth. Kofi Kingston and Woods right out attack Cross. Then Truth and Akam was one of the tag title belts, and Akam no sold him, but Miz rolled him up. So basically, the New Day came out to interfere and cost uh, the AOP guys the match. So and they started dancing. Yeah, bro. Let me just tell you this. I just think that number one, the AOP they lose more than they should. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there's a lot of inconsistent booking. I hope that this is not another thing that crosses a part of and doesn't and fails because it's not on cross. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, uh, the next Ricochet was helping Dragon off in the back. And the Breaker showed up and speared Dragon off. The Breaker Ricochet had a pretty good brawl. The dra- uh, Breaker darted him like a missile into the side of the truck, then picked him up and, and choke slammed him or power bombed him onto a car windshield, the front windshield of a car. And he had to get a uh, um, basically uh, taken out an ambulance, and his his uh, fiance Samantha Irvin came came out and went to the hospital. Went to the hospital. Um, I don't think you noticed this, but I believe that Ricochet had some padding on underneath his shirt in the back. So really? I don't probably. He well, he did because look at the two bumps he took. Right. He took the flat back bump off the thing on, onto the cement. Yeah. And then he took the one on the glass. So I yeah, think this was had- designed. To- Write them out of the show, right? I think they had because I, I, I was kind of looking. I was like, I wonder if they're going to put some padding on. Or if they had padding on, I think he had some some protective underneath. But bro, you're not going to power bomb a guy on a glass windshield with no protection, so, right? Well, that was smart because uh, but this is a they, in AEW they'd use real glass like they did with Jack right. Perry. No, oh, we're cool and we're tough until you cut an artery, or then you won't be that cool, right? And I, I just wanted to say this. I was talking to Jeff Jarrett today, right? And he was telling me, can you believe the people that are mad because that's the way they treated Ricochet? What are they supposed to do? He's leaving the show. And I'm like, exactly, dude. That's when you know people don't know about wrestling. Well, I'm not even sure if he's going to be leaving the show. I wonder if this is all. No, I think, it's, I think it's official. Can you look that up, Joe? Yeah, but is it official? They're saying because, like, I, has Ricochet made a statement? Okay. Just- I don't think he this would actually be a really good way to say he's leaving to get everything for a big comeback for him eventually. Could you know? be, so I, I don't know. Let, let, let's see what. I mean, I can't find anything that says 100%, but I'm pretty sure from what I've heard. So. All right. All right. So next is um, uh, so Pat McAfee had to be the announcer now, and it was pretty funny. He called, um, he called Drew McIntyre uh, as a handsome Scotland at 275. Right. That was funny. <laughs> then he introduced Finn Balor. He said, uh, um, Balor made his entrance alone, and Magnuson, he said, I got to do that. And Cole told him that his job wasn't done yet. So McAfee announced Balor is representing Judgment Day, presenting a 0% body fat of the 225-pound prey. Bro, McAfee is just so entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> it's just really funny. Uh, Drew versus, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Drew versus um, uh, Finn. Carlito McDonough showed up and taken out by McIntyre. Balor rolled up McIntyre for a two count. Balor hit another sling blade, a shotgun drop kick. He missed a coup de gras, then hit him with the kick and beat him, and then Priest and him have a face-off at the end of the show. Uh, there was no doubt what was going to happen. I actually could have known that was going to be the finish. Interference, the backfires, and Drew wins, and they have a face-off. So what did you think of this? It was all right. Nothing exciting. You know. Right. Uh, what did you think of it? It's all right. Yeah. I just thought the beginning and the end, which usually usually the bookends are the best parts of the show, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, was left a lot to be desired. Yeah. Um, so that's been our uh, raw review. Um, let me tell you one thing that I wanted to tell you. Um, just basically as a kind of a summary of the show, right? Mm-hmm. <sighs> I think that. Um, um, I think the Mysterio Morgan storyline has been great. All right. Um, wasn't somebody wrote this on Twitter that Balor was getting out of the same car as Morgan a few weeks back. Do you remember that? I have no clue. Sounds you, very okay. So something's going on there. Maybe it's Balor and not Dominic, which right. is great. That's bro. That's great storytelling. If it is, I don't have no clue. If it is, yeah. yeah. But they've been bringing it up, so. Why would they be getting out of the same car for no reason, right? Right. Um, 
and they might even swerve us and say, uh, who knows? Um, you can see that priest is going to, you know, little by little, they've been doing a very slow burn. But the fact that he said, I don't need judgment day. And the fact that he kind of volunteered Ben Balor and he, and they shot a look on his face. Like he wasn't happy. That didn't happen by mistake. Okay. Mm-hmm. Breaker has been great. The whole Otis storyline thing has been great. Uh, I just think the tag team segment accomplished nothing. There's some rough spots in it and I don't, about them and that's on them not on the girls so i just wanted to say that yo what's up i just want to thank you guys for watching this clip don't forget to hit the like button leave a comment and subscribe and join our youtube membership for hours and hours of exclusive unedited uncensored content and being a member will help you get involved in our upcoming live streams uh thank you for your support thank you for riding with us i know you got a lot of other uh podcast choices be it wrestling or other ones and thank you for picking us boom